Coming up on today's Airborne, the Cessna Citation Latitude prototype makes a successful first flight. Piper records a double-digit increase in 2013 revenue and deliveries. And Naseo Executive Board searches for new leadership. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Cessna Aircraft Company, a Textron company, is celebrating the successful first prototype flight of its highly anticipated Citation Latitude mid-size business jet. The first flight of the Citation Latitude tested flaps, landing gear, pressurization systems, anti-ice capabilities, stability, and control. The test flight reached an altitude of 28,000 feet and attained speeds of 230 miles per hour. Cessna flight engineers said all systems are performing as expected. Aaron Tobias, Cessna senior flight test pilot, says, quote, I feel fortunate to be able to fly for a living, and it is a privilege to be a part of the crew piloting the Cessna Citation Latitude on its maiden flight. The Citation Latitude was great today, which is to say it behaved just as anticipated, end quote. Type certification for the Citation Latitude is expected in the second quarter of 2015. Piper Aircraft has announced it's achieved double-digit growth in new aircraft revenue and new airplane deliveries for 2013 in a challenging global market for aircraft sales. The growth was led by increases in the sales of piston-powered training aircraft. Piper ended 2013 with a 13% increase in revenue from new aircraft sales. The revenue increase was a result of a nearly 19% boost in new aircraft deliveries. Piston-powered aircraft deliveries increased 22% over 2012, reflecting increased trainer aircraft sales. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Aero-sport.net. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Christopher J. Willenborg, Chairman of the Board of Directors for the National Association of State Aviation Officials, NASEO, has announced that the Executive Board will establish a search committee for the association's next president and CEO. Willenborg said, quote, Over the past several weeks, our Naseo family continues to mourn the loss of our friend and leader, Henry Ogredzinski. Despite this difficult time for our organization, the Naseo staff has continued to work diligently in Washington, D.C. in addressing our members' needs and concerns, end quote. The Naseo Executive Committee and Board of Directors voted in favor of naming Kim Stevens, interim president and CEO, during their search efforts to fill the position permanently. Stevens joined Naseo in March of 2013 as Director of Member Relations and Communications and began his duties as interim president and CEO on February 3rd. Before the selection process begins, Naseo members will have the opportunity to offer their thoughts on what leadership qualities and values are most important in filling the position. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back, enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. 
you ask somebody why they don't fly, they will typically give you one of two excuses. It's too expensive or I have no place to go. This week, we have the privilege of listening to our friend Alan Klattmeyer talking about bringing new people into aviation. Klattmeyer says, quote, show them the benefit. Search Alan Klottmeyer bringing new people on Aero TV's YouTube channel. Britain's Prince Harry launched a Spitfire flight scholarship for wounded ex-servicemen during a visit to Boltby Flight Academy. The scholarship is being operated by Boltby Flight Academy with support from Aerobility and Flying for Freedom in partnership with the Endeavor Fund of which Prince Harry is a patron. This scholarship draws inspiration from pilot Douglas Bader, who achieved 20 individual aerial victories during the Second World War, despite losing both his legs in 1931. Six candidates will be drawn from wounded, injured, and sick service personnel and veterans, who have already received initial flying training from two disabled flying charities, Aerobility and Flying for Freedom. Emulating World War II training, the candidates will progress from a Tiger Moth to a Harvard and finally to the Spitfire itself. It will culminate with at least one pilot taking a solo flight in a Spitfire to help mark the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain in September 2015. You're watching Airborne, more in a moment. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird Flight Simulations, the Redbird FMX, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Rolls-Royce has completed a long-term agreement with Lockheed Martin worth up to $1 billion to deliver approximately 600 engines to power future C-130J Super Hercules aircraft. The agreement secures the Rolls-Royce AE-2100 as the engine of choice for all variants of the C-130J through 2025. The AE-2100 powers all C-130Js, while the Rolls-Royce T-56 engine powers the legacy C-130 fleet. Lockheed Martin recently announced its intent to obtain certification from the Federal Aviation Administration for a new civil variant of the C-130J called the LM-100J. The agreement will ensure the continued success of the versatile and proven C-130J military transport aircraft. Lightspeed Aviation has announced that their Sierra a &R headset is now compatible with Flightlink, their free proprietary app for the Apple iPad and iPhone. Developed by Lightspeed Aviation, Flightlink adds enhanced functionality to all new Lightspeed headsets. When used with their Zulu 2 headset and now their Sierra headset, it allows pilots to capture incoming and outgoing communications for instant playback or archiving to common audio management software, such as iTunes, for later retrieval. The Sierra headset is Lightspeed's entry-level a &R headset. Lightspeed believes that by combining Sierra and Flightlink, they've created the ultimate value proposition for the pilot that is considering their first a &R headset. Lightspeed says that Flightlink is a great training tool for students new to Tower Talk or experienced pilots training for a new rating or proficiency, and it will enhance the learning experience. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories 
anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.